Hi everybody, my name is Doreen Ware. I'm here today to talk to you about rice data and, and the resources that we have in Grameen. Unfortunately, Joshua is not going to be able to uh, participate today. I know he was originally on the uh, announcement, but I'll be uh, taking you through the resources that we have at Grameen here that are focused on rice today. Before we uh, begin the seminar, I wanted to bring up to you a few things in case you're having some problems with uh, the video. So if your video is slow or stalling, I recommend mousing over the video window and a menu will appear at the upper left. Select medium or low quality from the drop down menu. Many times when you're starting in on the webinar here, it'll automatically default to high quality and this will actually cause some delays for you in the webinar. You can also toggle the video screen to full screen. This will make it easier for you to see what's going on. You can do that by clicking the icon with four arrows at the upper right of the video window and then a click again to return to the normal view. If you have any questions during the presentation, use the chat window at the bottom of your screen to post questions. In addition to myself in the audience uh, here at the, at the Dolan Center, I have Kapil Chogel, who actually worked on the OGE project, who, which I'm going to be focusing on, and Marcella Monaco, who's the program manager here at Grameen and has been working on most of the web-based presentations. So let's go ahead and get started. So Grameen is, is a comparative genomic and network resources, and it's focused on plants. But in addition to plants, we also host some of the other genomes for the purposes of comparisons, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. We have two major areas that we're focusing on, which is the genomes and the pathways. And to give you a little bit of an understanding, each of these data types are hosted in separate software platforms. The genomes are hosted in a genome browser making use of the ensemble infrastructure. The pathways are hosted now in plant reactome. Previously we've hosted the pathways in the biopsych tools, but we're now moved to the plant reactome which has additional flexibility in the platform to support functionalities that previously were not part of Biopsych. The Biopsych pathways that we had in the past are now all hosted and available at iPlant. In addition to the genome browser and the pathway tools, we have basic BLAST as an interface, Biomart which allows you to, to select and build different complex queries and download data sets. We also have a simple search, a health desk, in an FTP site. The first part of my talk I'm going to be focusing on the genome platform which is hosted as part of Ensemble. And as part of that platform for the reference genomes that we host, we run a set of analysis workflows where we to provide consistent annotations. This includes annotations of the repeat, structural annotations of genes using ab initio gene predictions. We also annotate those proteins using interpro domains, gene ontology term, and we also have the opportunity to provide information on the effect of variant using the variant effect prediction. For the comparative analysis, we run a suite of consistent workflows for whole genome alignments we do not include whole genome alignments across every, every single uh, species that we host. We provide whole genome alignments for the dicots against Arabidopsis and grape, and for the monocots ar against Ariza sativa. We build phylogenetic trees across all of these species that we host, including human, yeast, C. elegans as outgroups. And then where possible, we provide syntony mapping between these and the gene trees provide ortholog and paralog quality. In addition to the graphical user interfaces that I'm going to be highlighting, we also 
have access, programmatic access to the Ensemble RESTful API. And in the near future, we'll be providing access to uh, an API for the, the pathway tools. The main portion of, of Grameen really builds upon community genomes. And these genomes have to be accessioned in NCBI or ENA. We leverage the community annotations and we bring in variation. So in this case, we are not calling the gene models. We're taking the community's annotations. We are not calling the, an the variations, but we're taking variations that were called by the community members. And we're integrating this into a resource that allows you both graphical user interface, programmatic access, and then the ability to build complex queries across Biomart and download the data. This is an example of the graphical user interfaces that are available from Ensemble, and I'll be highlighting these. We have the genome browser view, ontology views, syntony views, and gene tree views. For the Pathways platforms, we're now hosting this through Plat Reactome. Um, for the arise for Grameen, the current release, we have 39 species. And I've highlighted on here the Arises that we currently are hosting. For the Arisa genus, there are 23 species. Of these, two are cultivated. We have 10 genotypes. They're polyploidy. They're distributed worldwide, and they really represent untapped diversity for the existing rice germplasms that are currently cultivated. The majority of the data that I'm going to be talking about today came out of the ERISA Genome Evolution Project and the IOMAP, the ERISA Mapping Alignment Project. This project was an NSF-funded project. The PI of the project was Rod Wing, and co-PIs on the project included Manuen Long, Scott Jackson, Carlos Machada, and Mike Sanderson. In addition to the NSF-funded project, we also have data from the IOMAP consortium, which included genome sequencing projects that were done in several of the countries, China, Taiwan, Japan, Brazil, China, France, and Australia. And the data sets that I'm going to be talking to you about and are hosted here at Grameen are part of this broader consortium. Now, the data that we're hosting and I'm going to be talking about, many of the current data is being shared under the Fort Lauderdale Agreement. Everything highlighted in yellow is currently in preparation for being published, but right now anyone can access this data currently through the Grameen resources. For these projects, what we're providing is a genome browser view. In the case of the OGE genomes, each of these genomes had expression data that was also part of the project, and it's a consistent set of tissue, including panicle, leaf, and root. And we make available the RNA-seq data as tracks. In addition, we have the OGE annotation, and we used a consistent annotation workflow called Maker P, and I'll be talking a little bit more about that later. We also have non-coding RNA annotations. We have whole genome alignments across the ERISA, and we have a consistent set of repeats. In RICE, we also have variation data. We have several sets of variants. These were called using assays based on SNP chips, as well as assays based on resequencing. Here you can see the publications associated with the SNP chips. And for the OGE project, this is based on variation called from sequencing data of the 20 African accessions. You can access this data in a gene view, and then you can also get access to the data through a Biomark query. So to support some of the comparative phylogenomics, we have 
two approaches. One is based on DNA level alignments, and the second one is based on phylogenetic trees that are based on proteins. For the DNA alignments, these are pairwise alignments based on LAST-Z, and they support cross-species browsing, and I'm going to be able to provide you some examples of that. For the phylogenetic trees, these are based, these are based on the protein from the annotations, and from that we can infer, infer orthologs and paralogs. We we'll also have the ability to do taxonomic dating and cross-species browsing. What you're seeing in this view is an example of a comparison view based on whole genome alignments. And this really is, is very nice because it provides you an opportunity to see where there are potential insertions or deletions, inversions, duplications. In some cases, these represent the biology of the organisms, and in other cases, they may represent assembly artifacts or annotation artifacts. In this example here, what Josh has done is he's provided a nice view where the annotation for Ariza sativa is, is used as a bridge between these genomes. And you can then take a look, and you can look at which genes are conserved across these which ones represent potentially, in this case, an example of a, a deletion in one genome down here. And I'm going to show you some close-up examples of this. So you can build these alignments using the functionality in, in the browser, and the alignments are pre-computed and stored in the, in the database. Here's an example of the tree viewer. And from this tree view, we're able to see speciation events as well as duplication events. If you look in the viewer, you can select to either expand or collapse of these nodes. Right here, you'll see the default. And what you see in red is, is the gene that was started out with. By selecting expanding or, or collapsing, you can expand this out. And so now you can see in this portion of the tree here, we've now expanded out. We can see the different genes underlying here. What you'll see here is the examples of the alignments based on the proteins. In this case here, you can see an example where in this one genome here, this may represent either a truncation of the gene that might be biological. It could represent a misannotation uh, mis that happened as part of the annotation process, or it could be a result of the underlying assembly being incomplete. But this really shows a nice example where you can see consistency among the gene models, potentially identify uh, artifacts within the assembly or differences in the biology. You can expand this out and then see the paralogs here. So by looking down here, I can look at the paralogs of the current gene within the organism that I'm looking at. In this example, we're looking at Arabidopsis here. And you can see this has been expanded out. So in the case of rice, uh, we'll use a use case of the domestication genes. So it's been known that the shattering one locus was identified as a YAVI transcription factor, and this is involved in controlling seed dispersal. It turns out that in Asian rice, there's a 4KB insertion, which is limiting the expression compared to the progenitor. But you can also see the gene is also disrupted in one of the cultivated sorghum as well. If we look in this gene tree here, what we actually see is that the African rice Oglabmariba is not showing up in this gene tree. And this absence here turns out to be a result of actually a deletion in Glabarima and not necessarily an artifact of the assembly. And here I'm showing you in the whole genome alignment views here where you'll see the green represents the DNA to DNA level alignments, and the blue lines represent the matches to different orthologue genes. 
what you'll see here in red is actually that locus and you'll see that in the genome here of glabarima this one region here is deleted and this turns out to be uh, an example where there was the deletion resulted in the loss of that gene in glabarima and if you want more information on this there's a paper that's been published and I would suggest that you go and read this. But using the infrastructure that we have here, if you're interested in different regions of the genome, you can zoom in and take a look at that. So one of the, um, the, the challenges of trying to decide if something is, for instance, an artifact of the annotation of real biology comes down to when you start to look at um, how things were done. So one of the things that we see when we are using the community annotation is that there can be some differences in the underlying algorithm that was used to call the genes that may not necessarily reflect the biology. I'll give you an example. If we use consistent community annotations but apply different methods and evidences, um, in the case of Osativa, there has it's been annotated twice, once by RAPDB and once by Michigan State University. And if we look at this, we can see, and I'll point out some examples of some differences. For Indica, it was annotated by BGI. Glabarima was annotated by the Munich Information System. Brachiantha was um, annotated by the Chinese Academy of Science at CAS. If we look down below here, this is an example of the IRGSP reference genome sequence. And if you take a look, you can see a difference between the MSU gene annotations and the IRGSP annotations in several locations. Now, which one of these is correct and which one is, could be wrong? in some cases are different. In some cases the MSU annotation is correct and in some cases the IRGSP annotation is correct. In some cases where it represents an alternative uh, isoform, they both could be correct. For the purposes of the OGE project, a decision was made that we would use consistent annotations across the project. So for this project here, the decision was to use Maker P there was a consistent set of three tissues that were used to support the annotation. In addition, we made use of the full-length cDNAs that were available for rice, as well as uh, some additional ESTs for rice. We also included um, proteins and a set of customized repeats. This, along with the ab initio gene predictions, were fed into Maker P, and the protein annotations were generated. We then did a further screening of those protein annotations based on Interprotogo to basically screen out potentially transposable elements that continued to be at, at part of the annotation. So within Grameen, we're doing quarter releases. We're hosting the community annotations. We have 39 species and their trees. We have the plant reactome, rice psych pathways, blast and biomart. In addition, specifically for rice, we're hosting a separate browser that's called the OGE browser. This is short term right now, but it allows us to have all the Maker P annotations that are consistent. So this is where it's different from the community annotation. We have these for 14 species. We have more than 21,000 gene trees that have come out of this. We have five additional RISA genomes, and we have RNA-seq data from the project. And if you want more information, you'll be able to see this from, from the OGE-specific portal. And the portal here was the work done by Sharon Way, and Sharon has actually been responsible for generating most of the cores that you see in Grameen and the OGE project. So within the OGE Grameen browser, we have 11 uh, focused genomes. We have three non-ARISA outgroups, 
This is to provide a reference for the phylogenetic trees. And we have five additional partial or scaffold ERISA genomes there. So that's going to basically end the part of the talk where I'm talking about the genome browser resources. I'm going to switch now to the, plat the pathway platforms. So the pathway portion of the project is really uh, a focused effort from Punkett J. Swell's group at Oregon State, working in collaboration with, uh, with the Reactome group. Um, in the last year, there's been some focused ongoing annotation for rice. There's now been more than 200 curated rice pathways. In the last year, the focus has been on looking at some of the more recent signaling pathways curation. Um, here you'll see an example of auxin signaling and brassosteroid, excuse me, brassosteroid signaling. Here's an example I'm going to show, walk you through of cytosolic glycos glycolysis. And within the views here, you can get details on the reference information, different compartments, how to download the data, and different molecules. If you select information on download pathways here, you'll see that you can get this in several different formats here, uh, comma-separated, XML, or Excel. You can also select the fields that you would like to see here, and so this allows you to actually download the information specifically. We also have reaction level data examples here that you can take a look at. And you can zoom in and look at specific information. In this case here, I'm looking at fructose biophosphate atolase. So the plant reactome data is based on the curated reference of Rhiza sativa japonica, but in the last year the group has done projections to all of the rice as well as several other plant species here. And here you can see a summary of the pathways that have been, the number of pathways that are available, the number of reactions, and the number of gene products. In this example here, Josh has generated a view looking at GA biosynthesis, and you can compare it between the different rice and Arabidopsis. In our future releases for rice, what you will be seeing is some additional variation data. We'll be hosting the, um, the 3,000 genomes uh, that were resequenced um, in collaboration with e Erie and BGI, and SNP variation was called from that. We're in the process of loading that data, and you should see it in the next release or the one afterwards. In addition, we have 104 rice genomes that were developed as part of a collaboration with CIOT, LSU, USDA, and NCGR. And also, you'll be seeing some additional new pathway curation. So I just want to highlight, once again, that this, the, the ability to produce gramine is, is based on many, many people on the project. Um, we work uh, very closely with our collaborators, um, myself, Punkage Jaswal at OSU and his group, Paul Kersey and Helen Parkinson at EBI, and more recently, Robert Pertoski are involved with us on the Ensemble and the EBI Atlas project. And we more recently started some collaborations with the European Variation Archive. For the Reactome work, we're working very closely with Lincoln Stein's group. And Peter Distachio, Guan Ming Wu have been uh, helping the OSU group. And we have a project that I haven't been able to talk to you about with um, ASPB Crispin Taylor focusing on leveraging automated techniques to curate some of the literature data and ingest that into Grameen. So I want to thank all of you. Um, and if there are any questions that I can answer, I'd be more than happy to.
Okay. So I see that um, Marcella has been answering questions as we go along. And so one of, one of the questions is, is, are there any QTL data currently in Grameen? So at the present, we're not hosting any of the phenotype data on the browser beyond expression data. But in the next year, we will be developing resources to host and to present the phenotype data for the QTLs. This is something as we've been um, retrofitting and moving forward with the infrastructure on the databases, we lost the pre previous QTL data, but we will be bringing this back. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, if there are no questions from the group, then I'm, I'm going to encourage you all after the, uh, the webinar is over that uh, you go ahead and please um, fill out the questionnaire. We would also value feedback on webinar, webinars that you think would be valuable. In the next month, the next uh, webinar will be on upload and downloading resources and Punkage JSWAL will be presenting this. And you should all be aware that we're going to be having our next release sometime towards the end of June. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and close the webinar if there's no questions. Thank you again, and once again, these video tutorials are online, so if you have some more detailed questions explicitly on how to use the browsers, how to use the trees, or how to use plant reactome. There are some tutorials that will walk you through that. Thank you again. Okay, we're good? Yep. Okay.